Hello beautiful internet family, Danny from danstube.tv and I'm very excited to talk about DJI's upcoming mini drone, the Mini 3. Now in this video we'll be talking about the specs, the rumors, the release date and the price of DJI's upcoming mini drone. All of this is speculation and rumor, none of it is fact, keep that in mind as you watch this video, but this is everything that we can expect from the DJI Mini 3. This little drone here is the Mini 2, and it's DJI's flagship mini drone. It's a 4K capable drone, it's got raw photos, it's got fantastic range and battery life, and a few other really cool things, but it's lacking obstacle avoidance, it's lacking tracking modes, and it's kind of become a little bit stagnant just based on the fact that we've seen three versions now of the Mini Drone. We've seen the Mavic Mini, we've seen the Mini 2, and we've seen the Mini SE. They've all got the same form factor, pretty much identical looking cameras. It feels a little bit like a software upgrade for the Mini 2 to offer 4K, but the sensors themselves look almost identical. They're all 12 megapixel um, still options, so you can only capture 12 megapixel still photos on all three drones. And it's just got to the point now that it's a little bit outdated, seeing as we've just seen Autel release the Autel Nano and Nano Plus. Now, Autel Robotics have been a direct competitor of DJI for a very long time now, but as I predicted last year, we would be seeing a lot more mini drones hitting the market, and it makes the most sense. You know, there are a lot of rules and regulations now that are governing, you know, the fact that a lot of people can't fly drones over 250 grams if they don't have a license, and that stops a lot of people throughout Europe flying really any drone above the mini drone range. So it makes the most sense for brands, and especially DJI as well, to really capitalize on that mini space. It's probably one of the most competitive markets that we're going to see in 2022. And Autel Robotics have released something killer with the Nano range. Firstly, they've decided to release two options for the mini drone Nano range. They've got the Nano, and then they've got the Nano Plus. Now, the Nano Plus is a one over 1.28 inch sensor. So it's a 0.8 inch sensor, nearly a one inch sensor. Really awesome drone, capable of 4K 30 FPS. It's a beautiful sensor, and I've seen some videos online which you can check out, just search them on, on YouTube or Google. Um, it actually is a really solid camera, so DJI really need to step it up here. Like that camera system on the Mini 2 is great, you know, no major complaints with it, it's done wonders for me and so many other people out there, but we need to see a noticeable bump now, a noticeable improvement in the camera quality from the next mini drone um, from DJI. It's really interesting that Autel decided to go with two versions because there's no major difference here. Like they both offer pretty much the same features and everything inside is, is pretty much identical. It's just the camera systems. So on the original, we'll call it the original, the normal Nano, not the Nano Plus, the Nano can actually capture still really awesome video and photo, but it's got a half inch sensor. So the other one's a 0.8 inch sensor, and that is on the good old Nano Plus, but the Nano is a half inch sensor. So if you wanna pay a little bit more for the Plus, you're getting a slightly improved camera, but everything else is pretty much the same. So I'm really curious to see what DJI do here. Are they gonna offer just the Mini 3, or are they gonna offer the Mini 3 and then the Mini 3 Plus? Really curious to see what they do. Let me know in the comments below, would you like to see two versions or just the one standalone Mini 3? The other thing that I really love about the Nano range is the color options. You know, it just gives it a lot more personality. I'm really over DJI's standardized gray look. Like, it works, sure. It looks professional, sure. But come on, like, it's a mini drone. There's a lot of people who are gonna be entering the space who probably want a little bit more personality behind their drone. So I'd love to see some unique colors like blues and greens and purples, something really unique here to actually differentiate it from the other range. Like if they just slightly redesign it and then it's the same color palette, it's gonna be a little bit disappointing. It's not a major factor, like it's not gonna change any of the functionality or any of the major features, but it really needs some personality. And DJI, if they're gonna innovate here with the Mini 3, some personality would be lovely as well. 
Now, some of the main calling cards from Ortel's Nano range is obviously that camera system, which is gorgeous. It's still only 4K 30 FPS, which the Mini 2 can already do. But the thing that's really unique here, besides obviously that larger sensor, which we spoke about before, is it has obstacle avoidance. It has obstacle avoidance on the front, the rear, and below. So not just front sensors, not front obstacle avoidance, but three directions, front, rear, and below. I was blown away when I saw that they were actually doing that on a mini drone that's under 250 grams. Ortel have done a fantastic job uh, putting that all into such a solid drone. It, it really is quite impressive what they've done there. And DJI need to do the exact same thing, if not better, you know, like otherwise their direct competitor is offering something better than them. So the Mini 3 needs to have minimum front, rear, and downward facing sensors. And the other thing, which is an obvious thing here, is we need to see tracking modes. So many people in this space want to see tracking options on the Mini 2. And, you know, we've recently seen um, the SDK being released. So that now means that third party apps can actually program uh, tracking modes into the Mini 2, the Mavic Mini and the Mini SE. For the Mini 2 and the Mini SE, it's only available for Android users right now, but that's gonna be coming very soon, but it's a third party application. So a lot of people probably don't wanna venture into that and they wanna just have uh, tracking options out of the box. And that's something the Mini 2 does not offer at all. Zero sensors on it, you know, no obstacle avoidance, sorry, uh, on the actual drone itself. It has a few sensors in the bottom here, but zero obstacle avoidance, zero tracking modes, and a very similar camera system to the previous two drones. So again, like I'm reiterating this point, but DJI really need to do something special here to make sure that they hold that mini space because it's going to be one of the biggest money-making spaces for drone producers, for sure. But it's also like something they need to make sure they capitalize on here. The Mini 2 was released in November of 2020 and the newly released Mini SE was released in July of 2021. The Mini SE was basically a rebranded Mavic Mini. Uh, it wasn't released in all countries. It's a very select offering, which is very odd to me because it's a great drone and I actually have a bunch of content on the channel if you wanna check that out. But since the Mini 2 in November of 2020, DJI haven't released any powerhouse mini drones. So it's well overdue now. And from what we can see, it's pointing towards an early release in 2022. So potentially quarter one of 2022. So maybe February or March is what we're looking at. March probably is, is most likely at this point based on what all the rumors and specs are pointing to. Um, but again, we haven't had any major leaks. It's been really impressive how they've kept everything under wraps so far. Um, but I'm expecting a release in the coming months for the Mini 3, especially because Autel Nano uh, went to CES. They got a lot of hype around their drones. There's a lot of people talking about, especially the Nano range on YouTube. And you know that's gonna be taking away sales from the Mini 2 now, especially because it's offering a lot more than the Mini 2. So DJI need to answer that and they need to answer it fast. And I think we'll see a Mini 3 in the coming months. Now, in terms of price, the Mini 2 is just under a thousand Australian dollars for the Fly More combo. So I would expect if we're gonna get an improved camera, we're gonna get obstacle avoidance, we're gonna get tracking modes, hopefully a few other things um, on top of that, I would expect the price to go up a little bit. So we might be looking at maybe 1100, maybe 1200 Australian dollars for the Fly More combo. That's justified though, if we get a killer camera system in this drone and obviously that obstacle avoidance as well. The other thing to mention here is battery life. So on the Mini 2, we're getting 30 minutes battery life, so probably about 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes of battery life from this drone. Now, the Nano range is quoted at 28 minutes, so you're gonna get about 20 to 25 minutes again. Now, DJI need to answer that again. You know, they need to have at least 30 minutes. If they can bump it to, let's say, 32, maybe 35 minutes, they're really going to appeal to a lot of people, but I would imagine with that extra weight, the extra power for the sensors and the camera system, we're probably still gonna look at about the 30, 32 minute range for battery life on the Mini 3. The other major thing that I wanna see here from the Mini 3 is just an improved design. Now, yes, this is a small lightweight drone, but it does feel a little bit like a toy, especially this back door here. It's a very flimsy feeling back door. It hasn't broken on me yet, luckily, but it just feels very cheap and I think Hopefully they can use some like higher quality materials here to actually make it feel 
like less of a toy drone and more of like a premium mini drone. And from what I can see with the Autel range, the materials they've used there are actually really high grade, high quality, and the plastic is just a little bit of a higher quality to kind of give you that feel that it's like a premium product. You know, you're not spending $50 on a toy drone. Like it's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for the Nano especially, but you know, the Mini 3 is gonna be over a thousand Australian dollars. I wanna see something just a little bit of, you know, a higher quality build here. Obviously weight's a big thing. They wanna keep that weight down and that's why they've gone with the lightweight plastic, but maybe just a polished finish or maybe something that just feels a little bit more premium. That would be great from the Mini 3. The other really cool thing that Autel brought out with the Nano is HDR photos. So that means it's gonna capture lots of different photos at different exposure points and then stitch it together to create the most dynamic photo possible in that situation. Now with the Mini 2, you can capture raw photos, but it would be great to see HDR photos as well. Maybe HDR video, if that's a thing that they can bring forward here. Um, but again, like they're being very careful probably not to tap into the Air 2S or the Mavic 3. They've got to keep it in that like lower range. You know, there's a tier system here. It's a hierarchy. If you want to spend more money, they're going to give you more features. The lower end, they try to limit it, but they still try to hook people and entice people. So I think it's kind of a balancing act here to offer enough features that it's appealing, but also hold back a little bit so that people don't go, well, I'll just buy the Mini 3. Why do I need an Air 2S, for example? We've seen the same controller design from DJI now for multiple iterations of different drones. Uh, the recent one was with the Mavic 3. We saw it with the Air 2S. We've seen it with the Mini 2. This is like the new controller design. I don't know whether they'll redesign it for the Mini 3. It's probably unlikely, seeing as the Mavic 3, which is the highest end prosumer drone right now besides the Inspire range, you know, that's got the same controller as this. So it's hard to say. This is the Mini 2 controller, the Mavic 3 controller. They'll probably stick with the same controller here. Um, they'll also probably have some compatibility with the Pro controllers, but it's highly unlikely we'll see like a bump in the controller, but we probably will see an improvement in terms of the transmission. So, you know, we may see the OcuSync 3 Plus, which we saw in the Mavic 3, capable of 15 kilometers of range. We might see something like that, or we might see just a slight improvement up to like 12 kilometers of range, for example. But, you know, hopefully we'll see that improved OcuSync 3 Plus. That would be fantastic. The other thing I really want to see, which a lot of people have probably labeled as a gimmick or a novelty, but I wanna see gesture controls here. You know, we saw it on the DJI Spark and I absolutely loved it. It was more than a novelty. It actually had functionality and it made it so much easier to use, especially for just someone who's on their own. You know, like the fact that I can control the drone with my hand, move it around like I'm kind of using the force and use different gestures to get photos or videos, that would be fantastic. And the other thing that would be like really, really cool is with the active tracking modes, I would love to just have some sort of gesture. So like, let's say this or a peace sign or, or whatever they decide to go with, and then the drone automatically tracks you. That would be fantastic. You know, you could be on your bike, for example, you could have the controller in your bag, you could be on the bike, you could do this, the peace sign, let's say, and it will start tracking you straight away. You then do this and it will start recording. You don't have to touch the controller and you're, you're confident that it's doing its thing. You know, that would be really cool to see. And especially for a small drone like the Mini 3, I think it's fitting. You know, if you're gonna go with the larger drones, it's probably more of a pro space. See, so they probably don't care about gestures, but the Mini 3 would be so cool to see gestures return. Um, and I think it actually adds a lot of value for the user. It's more than a gimmick. It's more than a novelty offering. It's actually a really useful feature. So I think that's kind of where we're sitting with the Mini 3. These are most of the things that the rumors and specs are pointing to. Some additional things that I've added in that I would really love to see. Um, I think one of the main things that we probably will see is they'll bump the camera to 4K 60 FPS. You know, if they're direct competitors doing 4K 30, they're probably gonna try to push 4K 60 FPS. It's a really big calling card if they can do that. If they can offer it in a 0.8 inch sensor or maybe even a one inch sensor somehow, if they were able to do that at 4K 60, I think so many people would be enticed to get the Mini 3 over the Nano range. Again, I would love to see some cool colors. You know, they can go with that standard gray, the DJI gray, but bring some life into it, please. Like, let's have some bright blues and greens and purples. Let's have like a range of really colorful, bright drones. That would be really cool. And 
actually beneficial because the gray just blends into the sky, but like a purple drone would definitely stand out and would look rad. And then all those other things I mentioned before, I think are the main calling cards that we'll see. Most of them might not make the cut. I think the main things we will see here is an improvement in range, 100%. It will probably go, you know, to 12 to 15 kilometer range. Um, I think we'll see, and well, we will definitely see an improvement in the camera. It has to come. Uh, we'll see obstacle avoidance and we'll see tracking modes. I think on its own, those four features are gonna be enough to get most DJI fans to upgrade, but hopefully we'll see some other little hooks, you know, some colors, uh, maybe different models, maybe like a pro thing, like a three plus, maybe a few things that actually entice people like the gesture modes. Um, but outside of that, those four main offers is pretty much all DJI needs to do and they will sell the Mini 3 like it's no one's business. They'll be just flying off the shelves. So I'd love your thoughts in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the Autel Nano range? Are you interested in that? Do you think DJI are gonna bring the heat with the Mini 3 or do you think the Autel Nano is the drone to go for? Um, yeah, what else would you like to see on the Mini 3? I'd love your thoughts. I'll chat to you in the next one and peace.